Hey, everybody. Come on in. <laughs> um, I agree with Leanna on a lot of things, but I say GIF. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, judge me, if you will, for that. Um, I'm going to talk you guys through a email onboarding framework. Um, so you can use this framework for onboarding, but you can also use it for um, email campaigns in general. Uh, it's called the dinner party strategy. I love metaphors to help people connect to things that might not make sense otherwise. It also helps it stick in your brain, um, which is really it's a lot back to what Leanna said, jokes and things that you relate to stick in your brain. Um, so hopefully this will stick in yours. Um, you are in the right place if you bought a ticket for microconf. Um, but also, <laughs> if you send emails to an existing list for your brand, um, this is for you. Uh, if you feel completely overwhelmed by the idea of segmenting your list, um, and then if you aren't sure what kind of emails to send besides links to your latest blog posts, I feel like a lot of brands maybe just write blog posts and then send out links. Um, there are other emails to send as well. Uh, and if you don't want to over email your list, I hear that a lot, like, oh, I don't want to bother people. Um, you won't be bothering people if you do it right. Uh, so a little bit about me, uh, that's me, Val Geisler. I am an email marketing conversion copywriter and strategist. It is a mouthful. Uh, I worked in-house as the first marketing hire at an email marketing software company that is a friend of MicroConf, ConvertKit. Um, I spent some time there learning everything I know could possibly know about email marketing. Um, and I write email onboarding teardowns on my blog. So you can go to my website and there's uh, teardowns of various software companies. Watch out, I'm coming for you. Uh, I am obsessed with churn reduction through email. Um, if you are concerned about churn or your customer numbers, um, sales isn't always the first place to turn. Look at the customers you've already attracted and keep them. Uh, and I've worked with brands like Access Ally, Pick, Beacon, Podia, Acuity, and more on this. Um, so one thing I know for sure is that there's no right answer for all email marketing. What works for your business might not work for everyone, or what works for someone else might not work for you. Um, testing, everything in email is about testing, and that's why I love it. I'm a data and information person. I love setting inf sending emails out, seeing what kind of results we get, and then tweaking and making changes from there. Um, you cannot set it and forget it. If you wrote an email onboarding campaign three, six years ago, it's time to revisit it. Uh, and you can be an email pro. So the dinner party strategy, these are gifts, but they're not working. Uh, what? It's working? Oh, it doesn't work down here, but you see it? Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so you have uh, here some examples of onboarding emails. So I sign up for free trials. I sign up for a lot of free trials. Uh, and I get the emails. So you have a couple of examples here. The Calendly one looks like a really long one, but that's actually two different trials I signed up for in Calendly. Uh, three emails over the course of 30 days. Uh, Harvest sends four. Deep Dive, which is not a free trial, a paid sign up for Deep Dive, and uh, in my first month I got two emails from them. Uh, and then uh, the last one, we have four emails. So the point here is that most software companies are not sending enough emails in that trial period. Whether you have a 14-day trial, a 30-day trial, a paid first month even with a 30-day money-back guarantee maybe. Um, you want to be in communication with your customers. Deep dive, I forgot. Actually, I had a calendar reminder to cancel after my first month. Um, but I forgot that I had deep dive because I never heard from them. So dinner party strategy, how to plan a party. You usually have, when you have people over to your house, um, you might have like a welcome, you have a little bit of time before you, they, you don't walk in and serve them dinner immediately. Um, there's maybe some appetizers, a main course, side dishes, which are my favorite, so they get an exclamation point, uh, and dessert, and then you hopefully enjoy the evening and you invite people to come back. And so that's what you're gonna do in your emails. So this is a welcome email. I'll walk you through each one of an example of each one of those. Uh, this is a welcome email from Drift, and Drift is a very. I mean, obviously they they do conversational marketing. They uh, coined that term, so I think. Um, so uh, they really get what they're doing here. But it's a very friendly. Um, their welcome email, by the way. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome to X. 
welcome to insert your company name is the most used welcome email. You will stand out immediately if you do not have the subject line, welcome to my brand. Uh, if you just write something else, just saying hey, and this is Dave just saying hey, um, Shout out to the Daves in the room. Uh, there is a, a little video of him, and you can see how casual it is, right? Like he's in a room with a door, there's like a fire alarm behind him. Um, it's not highly produced. You do not have to have a video crew and tons of money to make really personal emails that people relate to. Uh, the second step of the dinner party strategy is appetizers. This is where you're bringing in value. So we're not talking about the product yet. You maybe are linking to it, but we're not like shoving features down your face. Um, we're giving you value. And so this is an email from a proposal software and they're talking about the most um, used feature in a proposal, in why people come to proposal software is to have a template to make things simple for their lives. So this is adding value to the customer's life um, by showing them how to get the most, it is about the product, but it's also about the customer. So the main course, this is your product. This is why people signed up for your trial. And that's the email that comes next. Um, and this is a 100% product focused email. Uh, you still relate the product back to the customer. Um, it's never uh, all about you. So again, not shoving features down their virtual throats, but um, really focusing on the customer now on the third email, not the first, not the second, but the third. Uh, side dishes, so this is more value. Um, Co-schedule, I, I gave you two uh, images here. So on the left-hand side, that is one long email. So if you think long emails don't work, um, think again, try it, test it. Um, but this is one big long email introducing this very long um, piece of content that they created that is a, an ebook, a little bit of an online course, um, but it's completely free to their subscribers and it's, nothing but value. Obviously, that piece of content tells people how to use CoSchedule in their skyrocketing their marketing results, um, but they're purely creating content for the purpose of driving people to using their product. Dessert is a, a little bonus. So this is where you are getting closer to the end of the trial, um, and you might want to give people a little bonus to take action, to get them converted. Um, so this is Dubsado, another proposal software, and they are talking about using their referral programs. So they're encouraging people to give referrals, and they're actually gonna give them time, uh, extra time on their, their software for free in exchange for those referrals. So. Um, Again, this is like what's in it for them uh, to, to actually talk about your product and create some virality around it. Uh, the last thing in our dinner party is that we get, give some kind of return invite. We invite people to come back. Um, this is monday.com, which is also another proposal software. I don't, I don't know why I chose all of those. Um, but monday.com does a great job of asking people to come back. So uh, onboarding does not end when the trial ends. Okay, um, onboarding goes on. Even if they don't convert, you have, an, uh, you have a huge opportunity with everyone who did not convert from your free trial to talk to them again and invite them to come back. Um, you can see here, this is a, it actually is a very short email, so the, the smaller one is the, the whole email. And then the, the body of the email is really brief, um, but it is saying, just come back. We're not, they're not offering a whole new free trial. They're, uh, they, they do offer an extension on your free trial, but they're not giving some kind of major giveaway. They're not really impacting their bottom line because this is already a customer who hasn't converted. So extending their trial can be a way to get them to come back. So you want to avoid the spam trap in all of these emails. Um, the, the key to getting people to convert from your emails is getting them to actually see and open your emails. Um, and to do that, you want to be useful, you want to be personal, which Leanna talked about, and you want to limit distractions, right? So your onboarding emails all have a job. Uh, this framework gives you those jobs that they are going to do. And uh, you can, this is another example of an email that does nothing but that. There are two links in this email, but they point to the same place. It's very distraction free. It's super useful and really personal to that particular customer's journey. So I wanna make sure that in this very brief little talk uh, that you have a few takeaways. So creating high value onboarding campaigns for your customers is really doable, um, even if you have never done it before. 
Uh, you can build and connect your, with your customers, build a relationship with your customers, and it changes your business. It absolutely changes your business. I've seen it in action. Um, and I'm here to help you do it for yourself through this talk. You can take this framework and apply it to your own customer journey and uh, watch it in action. So Einstein said that everything in life should be as simple as possible, but not simpler, and that's true for email. So I want you to put it to work, and then I'm on Twitter, pretty active. I think I'll, I'm connected with a lot of you already, but if you're not already connected with me, I'm at Love, Gal Love Val Geisler, I can say my own name, uh, and that is um, where you can tell me what you learned from today's talk, or you know, if you want to chat further in general. Um, Please remember, though, that this is not just theory. This is what I do every single day. I focus on email onboarding. You can see uh, when you check out my blog that that is something I'm pretty obsessed with. So um, they're, they're the exact same principles that you can use for any campaign, too. So we talked about onboarding specifically, but you can use this for any campaign-driven emails. The, the idea of having them walking them through an entire customer journey, whether it's onboarding, retention, uh, promotion, win back campaigns. There's all kinds of ways you can use this framework. And if you have questions, I am at heygirl at valgeisler.com. And uh, valgeisler.com is my website. Thank you. Thank you.